Welcome to Excel 2010 Business Math video number 39. Hey, if you want to download this workbook, Excel 2010 Business Math Chapter 4, click on the link below the video. Hey, in this video here, I actually I'm going to zoom in just a little bit here, Alt W G. Last video we saw how to calculate a checking fee for the month by hand. We still used Excel as our calculator. But here we want to see how to take this one bit step further and do it automatically. Uh, so no matter what we type in these cells, it'll tell us exactly what the monthly charge is. The idea is, last video, we calculated our monthly charge, but we had to manually go through and look up whatever the maintenance charge per month was and the per check charge. So for example, last video we said, our average balance was 833, so we found that it was in this category. We then had to take our maintenance per month, at 750, and then add to it 38 times the 20 cents per check. So we want to see how to do this automatically. And I'm actually going to take this in a few steps. This will be the first time we've seen the VLOOKUP function in this class. Now VLOOKUP is awesome. Because remember, this is the number that determines which row, right? Actually, I'm going to add some dollar signs here too, right? Probably here too. So this 833, if we were doing it manually, right, we can see the numbers between 500 and 1,999 and 99 cents. So 833 would be there. We'd have to then manually take that, you know, refer to it with a cell reference and multiply the number of checks times that. But we don't want to do that. We want to automatically be able to type anything here, and it'll know which row and know to take the monthly charge, the per check charge, and multiply it by this. So let's take it in two steps. We're going to learn VLOOKUP. Now the first thing is, actually this should be dollars too. Uh, VLOOKUP is not going to be able to handle these. What it does is you put the lower limit for each class, right? So 0 is the lower limit here. Now, it says less than 500. So really, the category would look like this, 0 to 499.99. Now, what's so cool about the VLOOKUP is you don't have to put both the upper and lower. You just put the lower. It knows if it's looking here to look to the next one and say anything less than that. So it knows if it's between 0 and 499 to go there. Let's take this example here, though. Here's what VLOOKUP is going to do. In this cell, I'm going to say, hey, VLOOKUP. That's V for vertical, L for lookup. It's called vertical lookup because the lookup values are listed vertically. So here's what the formula is going to do. It's going to say, uh, take this lookup value, right? It's going to put it into its head, just like we would do. The VLOOKUP will go over to this first column, because our it will tell the VLOOKUP function to use this whole table. It'll look through the first column. It'll bump, it'll race down the first column. And when it bumps into the first number bigger, remember, we have 833 in our brain. It goes boom. Oh, $2,000 is bigger. I better jump back here. And that's how it knows which row. Then, remember, we gave VLOOKUP the number. We told it where the table was. VLOOKUP went bump into the first bigger one, jump back here. You also have to tell VLOOKUP which column, 1, 2, or 3, has the thing you want to return back to the cell. So if we need to look this up, race here, bump into this bigger one, come back here, you're going to have to tell VLOOKUP that column 2 has the 750 that you want to throw back in the cell. So let's try it equals and VLOOKUP. You type VL and tab. Now there's a bunch of arguments here. They're kind of helpful because they're exactly like we would do it if we did it by hand. So this lookup value. Well, just like we look at the number and put it in our brain, right, and then come over to the first column, you have to tell VLOOKUP what to look up. So you're going to say, hey, look up that number in that cell. Comma. And notice the screen tip is bold. So as soon as you type a comma, now it says table array. Oh yeah, just like you would have this table printed out or have it in your Excel spreadsheet, you have to tell the VLOOKUP function where the table is. So you highlight this. Now important about VLOOKUP, if this table isn't sorted from smallest to biggest, then this won't work. 
So smallest to biggest. Also, the value, remember we're looking up this. It has to look, it only looks in the first column. So it's looking here, it bumps into that 2,000, and then it jumps back. Now notice the dancing ants are going around how many columns? There's the first one, the second one, the third one. So now I'm going to, with table array bold, type comma. Column index, this is where you tell VLOOKUP which one of these columns has the thing you want to throw back in the cell. So one, two. So I'm going to type a two. This last argument, we don't need. We have our numbers sorted in uh, ascending order, going from smallest to biggest. So this will work. That's it. Now let's try it. Let's, tr let's type in 2,500. Now I already can, by hand, I put the 2,500 in my brain. I come over, I race down here. It bumps into the first one bigger. It comes back over here. I go over to the second column. I get 5, and I throw it back in the cell. That, when we, when we type 2,500, when I hit Enter, that's what VLOOKUP does. Now that's very profound. Let's try 7,500, and it better return 0. Because now you don't have to do any manual looking up. And this is just a little table. You can imagine if we had a huge table. So I'm going to put this back to Control-Z-Z. Now let's do the same thing. Now we have to look up this. But instead of returning the 750 to this cell, I want to return the 20 cents to this cell. Now remember, the only difference is going to be 1, 2, 3. We're going to tell the VLOOKUP to retrieve the item that it's going to put back in the cell from the third column. So ready? Equals VLOOKUP. Got to tell VLOOKUP what to look up. Because that's determines. That's why we have, when by hand, we have this first column. And in VLOOKUP, we have this. That always determines which row. So you tell it, hey, look up the 833, comma. And I'm going to highlight the entire table. First column has the thing we're looking up. And it's sorted in ascending order. Comma, column index, 1, 2, 3. So this one is 3. And you just type a 3 in. Pretty amazing. Let's try it. So 2,500. Absolutely awesome. So I'm going to go Control-Z. And now we simply do what equals this plus number of checks times that, 1510. Now let's change this right here, 2,500. Absolutely beautiful. Look at that. So you can even I check it. There's a, a $5, and we had 38 times 10, so that would be $3.80. Exactly right. Now I'm going to Control-Z. Now I want to take this one step further. All right, This is beautiful. We have a VLOOKUP looking up the maintenance charge per month. We have VLOOKUP looking up the per check charge. Let's look at this formula right here. What is it doing? It's actually that B10 is looking into that cell. But let's click Escape, and what is in that cell? Ah, it's looking at a VLOOKUP. Let's look at this once more. B9, that's the 38, and then B11. That's that right there. I click Escape. Oh, there's a VLOOKUP there, too. So I want to show you how to uh, what's called mashing up a formula, because this formula right here is actually using that cell and this cell. And in those cells are VLOOKUP. So I'm actually going to copy those VLOOKUPs and paste them into this into one mega formula here. That way you don't have to have all these individual cells. You just have a single formula in a single cell. Now there's a great trick for doing this. Because most people, they look at this and they're like, oh, I can't create a formula that big. However, if you can put one of the pieces of formula in one cell, one in the other, and then refer to those cells with the formulas, no problem. Here's a great trick to what's called mash them all up together. Go to the Home ribbon. And in the clipboard, there's a <coughs> dialog launcher for the clipboard. And then we want to go put B10 in edit mode. And I'm going to highlight in edit mode and copy. Right. So now I can kind of see this over here, right? And I can see the 2 right there. Escape. And then I'm going to put this in edit mode, F2. And I'm going to copy this VLOOKUP, Control-C, Escape. I can see there's a 3 there and a 2 there. Now I'm going to come here and look. And it was like, oh yeah, it was um, that 750. Oh, that was the 2 one. 
plus the number of checks times that one. And that had the 3. So I'm going to come down here and simulate that. I'm going to say equals. Well, it's the first thing is that. Well, what is that? That was the VLOOKUP that looked up the second column. So I'm going to come up here to the clipboard and plus. And now what did I do next? Oh, I had the number of checks. And then what did I do next? I did times. And probably an even better way to do this is just go times and then click on the 20 cents. But before you click on the 20 cents, you go, oh yeah, there's a VLOOKUP with a 3 in there. So then come up here and go, now that's a big, cool formula, right? There's two VLOOKUPs in one formula, a plus and a multiply. But when you hit Enter, you get 1510. So now you can type whatever you want in here. 5,200 better be 0. 2,500, it better be 880. Right? And you could even delete these. Right click, delete. And no way, you got to be kidding me. 833, uh, 833, boom, all together in one cell. All right, uh, next video, we'll see how to build a checkbook register. And actually, I'm going to, uh, you always have the answers to download, so I'm actually going to undo and leave it like that. But that was just to show you that you could delete all this now, and that big, cool formula works. All right, see you next video.